In this edition, we're gonna be going over a basic sewing concept that you're gonna be using all the time. So let's get started. Welcome to The Sewing Report. I'm Jennifer Moore, helping you discover your love of sewing. And we're gonna be talking about this concept. I learned it when I was just beginning and I just find I was using it over and over and over again. So I thought it would be fun to share with you as well. And that is taking two pieces of fabric, sewing them right sides together, leaving a, an opening for turning and then turning that right side out and then top stitching or sewing the opening shut. You're gonna use this from anything from blankets to placemats to napkins, coasters. I'm going to be demonstrating on this baby burp cloth. It's just quilting cotton on one side and then this waffle weave 100% cotton cloth on the other. So let's move over to the ironing board. I've got my fabric laid out and instead of using pins, I actually use a little bottle of squeezable Elmer's washable school glue. It's pretty much just starch so it won't hurt your fabric. And whenever I'm working with woven fabric, I will try to do this and glue base the seams instead of having to pin everything. I'm just going to put a line of glue all around the perimeter. I'm leaving an opening that's about six inches on one of the longer sides. And I'm making sure that the glue won't be in my seam allowance, won't move past it. I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance. So I just have to be sure that the glue doesn't go past that. And because this fabric is pretty absorbent, I'm using a heavier line of glue than normal, just so that it doesn't all soak in. Put your fabric over top of it, like this. It doesn't have to be super exact. I cut the white fabric a little bit larger. All right, so this is lined up pretty nicely, and I'm just going to take a dry iron and hit these edges, and that should keep my seams in place for sewing. And this is the way you don't have to use pins. You can normally get away with this in most scenarios if you're using woven cotton cloth. It doesn't work as well with knits, just, I don't know, just because it's stretchy. So now this project is ready to sew. Wasn't that easy? This is where I left my opening, so I just need to make sure to sew around this and not over top of it and then I should be good. Right. I'm using the Eversone Sparrow 25. I've got a walking foot in there because I like to use a walking foot for most projects. I do a lot of quilting projects and it works pretty well for garments. All right, so now all we have to do is sew around the sides and I'm gonna start about right here. And again, we're using about a quarter inch seam allowance. You want to be sure that you are securing the seams at both ends, so make sure to back stitch a little bit. All right, let's go, and I'm using a 2.5 stitch length. All right, so I got a few stitches here, so let's back stitch here, and then move forward. All right, and we're sewing our project up. You get to the corner, just pivot and keep sewing. And you can really use any fabric for this. You can use cotton, you can use whatever, but I just chose the terry cloth fabric to make a nice burp cloth. I also just made some placemats and I used canvas on the underside for more stability. You can also interface the fabrics to give the fabric a little more stability and durability. So if you're making something that's gonna be more for heavy use like placemats, that might be a good thing to do. I use this technique a lot for baby blankets. You can also layer some batting in the middle. So instead of having just two pieces of fabric, you would put batting on the one side on the outside, not in the middle, and that will give the baby blanket more warmth, and then you can top stitch around it and that holds everything in place. So there's a lot you can do. There's so many variations of how you can use this one technique to make so many different things. You also don't have to keep the edges square. You can round off the corners and make something with a bit of a softer look. I've done this with placemats before and with blankets. So you can do whatever you want. Don't just think you have to do exactly what I'm doing. slowing down at the corner and then we're just gonna pivot 
and keep sewing. We're almost done here. We're coming to the end, so now we're just gonna back stitch. All right, back stitch. Here we go. And then stitch again, and that's it. So let's take this out of the sewing machine. Now we just have to turn this right side out, press it, and then top stitch, and also trim the corners. All right, so we're gonna trim the corners next. Here's what we have now, and you can see at the top in the middle there is an opening that I did not sew. It's because we have to turn this right side out. We're just gonna trim these corners off. Make sure not to cut through the thread. You don't wanna cut through your corner. So we're just gonna go around and do that on all sides. And the reason we're doing this is because if you don't trim the corners and you try to turn it right side out, you're gonna have a lot of bulk in the corners and it's not going to sit right or look right and you're not gonna be able to turn it very well. So you're gonna to wanna to reduce the bulk by removing these corners. And you'll do this with other projects as well. Anything where you're turning it and there's a curve or there's a corner or something, you're gonna to wanna to do that. All right, here we go. So now these corners are trimmed. To help me turn the item, I'm going to use this chopstick. It's got a pointy end. I just have to make sure not to press it too hard. All right, so let's turn this right side out. Be gentle. You don't want to tug it too much. Let it work itself out on its own a little bit and you're helping it, but you don't want to pull too forcefully. You want to be gentle. Here we go. This is turning out quite nicely. And I used some scrap fabrics for this project because I'm making a baby blanket and then I thought it would be cool to have a matching burp cloth as well. So I actually sewed two scraps of fabric together to make sort of, not really for a patchwork look, but just to add some interest to the fabrics on the front side. This could easily be a scrap fabric project if you sewed a lot of your scraps together. All right, so this is starting to come together. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the chopstick and poke out the corners. And then we're gonna press this as well. So we're gonna poke out the corners like this. All right. I'm gonna poke these corners out like this. Just make sure not to, just make sure not to poke too hard because then you might go through your stitches and you don't really want that. I don't want to poke a hole in it. So just make sure to be kind of careful here. All right, here we go. You might have some spare threads coming out here, but that's okay. Here we go. This corner looks pretty good. This corner looks pretty good too, actually. And see why we left this opening. It's so that we can have a place to turn this out. And then when we top stitch it, you're actually not gonna be able to tell that the opening is still there. There we go. Just turn in this, making sure not to poke it too much. There we go. And see why we trimmed the corners? Just so that it looked nice at the end. So now this is paying off for sure, yeah. I'm just gonna give this a good press right now and then we're gonna top stitch about maybe an eighth of an inch from the edge, maybe a little bit less than a quarter, we'll see. All right, so just take your iron and iron around the outside. You can use a little bit of steam if you want, but you want this to look, you want this to look very, very neat. There we go. When you get to the opening here, you're gonna to wanna to tuck this in so that no one can tell it's there. Sort of like this, here we go. There we go. And you're gonna to wanna to try to line it up as closely as you can with the actual edge. 
There we go. So like about here, that, that seems pretty good. Let's just take your iron and then iron that. You may have to work with it a little bit here. There we go. It's got some good steam going on here. Let me check out the edge to make sure it looks straight here. I'm just gonna fix this just a little bit. Just take this out a little bit more. And that's it. So now all I'm gonna do is trim the threads and I have got a burp cloth. And voila, here we have one baby burp cloth. So the front is the quilting cotton and then the back is this nice absorbent waffle cloth that I got from fabric.com. And I will try to link the fabrics below for you. If you enjoyed this project, don't worry because you can do so much with this one technique. You can really go to town. I just find I was using this over and over again, so I thought it'd be fun to share with you. If you end up making this project or something similar from this video, feel free to tag me on Instagram and use hashtag sewing report squad. I'd love to see what you're working on. And if you enjoyed this video, I'm going to be trying to make more tips and techniques videos. So stay with the sewing report for a lot more and be sure to subscribe to get the latest. I'm Jennifer Moore and I will see you next time.